Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a 6x6 six six wooden canvas that I did a paper painting collage on, inspired by the Art Joy of Sharing February mood board. Every month in Art Joy of Sharing Facebook art community, we post a little thing like that thing that's printed out. It's got some pictures on it and it is to inspire you for that month for your art. And so I'm just showing you how I was inspired this month in February by the mood board. I did this piece during the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show this morning, Thursday, uh, the 20th of February. And this is the speed up version. If you'd like to watch the real time recorded version, I will have the link below the video to the show. And you'll be able to see what Peg Robinson did as well because we do our live streams together split screen you can see me on one side and pick on the other so i recommend that you know if you like if you like to interact with people and have some fun come over to our live stream every thursday morning at 10 30 central time and join us because you can chat and comment and and talk to us while we're working so i have some painty papers some ephemera some uh, stenciled paper, some gel printed papers, just whatever that I pulled out from my stash using the colors from the mood board. And they are, you know, peach and pink and orangey colors, warm colors for the month of February. And I'm just making kind of an abstract background with these little pieces. And after I got done with my background, someone in the commentary in the chat said, it already looks like art and it's just your background. And I thought that was kind of funny. It does kind of look like an abstract art piece already <laughs> before I've done anything to it. But I wanted to uh, unify it a little bit. So I got out some light pink uh, paint and some peachy color, pinky peachy colored paint, watered it down with a wet brush and brushed it over the entire canvas and then wiped it back with a wet baby wipe just to get it a little bit more unified to get everything, you know, it's supposed to be a background. So I don't want it to be too diverse, just interesting, but not completely separated, you know, all the lines separated. And so that's a good way to unify things is to just put a little bit of paint on there. Then once it's dry, I want to add some texture to it. So I'm going to use a Stencil Girl stencil. This one is designed by Cecilia Swatton, and I will have a link below the video to everything that I use, all the links to everything that I use in the video. But I'll have a link to this specific stencil. I can't remember what it's called, so I have to look it up. So, <laughs> but it's really cool. It's, it's an interesting leaf uh, branch type of a situation. And I'm using DecoArt Molding Paste, which comes out white and looks really cool on there white. I actually kind of wished it would have stayed that color, but as it dries, it becomes more translucent. I was planning on painting and collaging over it anyway, so that doesn't matter. If you did want a tint molding paste, you can. You can add acrylic ink or paint to it and change the color of it before you even use it. Um, or add glitter to it or add sand to it. I mean, there's lots of things you can do. It's a very versatile product. product. And it just makes some, some texture, some dimension on your piece. Just make sure that once you're done using your stencil, you clean it off. Uh, so that that stuff doesn't get stuck to your stencil because it's hard to get off once it's dry. So I gave that a good dry and then now I'm going to do a little bit of dripping because I wanted some paint or some color to go down in between all the, the bits of the stencil and make it stand out more. So I pulled out some golden high flow acrylic paint. This is a very very pigmented but very fluid paint. I think they've mixed it with maybe airbrush medium or something to make it a lot thinner, a lot more flowy. And um, then I'm also using a water, a water, not a water brush, a spray bottle with water <laughs> to help it drip and spread even more. And then I'm using a, a baby wipe to kind of wipe some of it back in areas. I thought I wanted to use the titanium white on there too, but it just didn't look right. So what I ended up doing was coming back in with that same light pink paint and the wet brush that I had before and uh, just adding back in some lightness here and there. 
in between and around the plant looking things. And that is my background. I gave it a good dry, make sure everything was dry. And then I did some dry brushing. This, this brush is like a stencil brush. It's very stiff, stiff, hard bristles. And I get a little bit of white gesso on there, then rub it off on the paper to make sure that there's not too much. And then I'm just lightly flicking the brush over the textured areas. And where it is textured, it picks up a little bit of that white gesso and makes those um, leafy, planty looking things stand out. Now on the February mood board, there was a bunch of kind of orange, peach, pink colored roses, very full open blooms and really pretty roses. And so I wanted to be inspired by that. And I decided to paper paint style collage on some roses onto my piece. Before the show, when I was waiting um, for the show to start, I did tear up some of my painty papers and I tear a circle or a U shape and then I tear along the edge of it and make these crescent shapes out of the paper. Then when I lay them down and make them in kind of a circle shape, laying, layering them over each other and over each other, it makes what looks like a rose with petals, with open petals. And it's just a fun thing to do. I'm using um, oranges, peaches, uh, kind of a rusty orange color, and some bright pink and some light pink. And um, yeah, just making a rose out of interesting pieces of paper. Maybe some red on that one. There was a little bit of red. Just all the colors that you might see on the mood board in the in the sunset and different things, different sh shadows and shades of the color. So it's pretty fun. If you're enjoying this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. I'll answer you within probably 24 hours. And of course, you can share this. You can subscribe and turn on your notification bells, uh, share it on Pinterest, share it on Facebook. All those things really help my channel grow. And my channel has been steadily growing at the same pace uh, all year so far. So I'm excited by that. I would like to grow it even bigger. I'd like to reach more people and share my joy of art and my love of art and how much fun I have making things. So, yeah, please do that. Um, I did, don't, did I mention already? I don't know. I, I, did I mention this is from the live stream? I think so. The live stream is supported by a group uh, art community over on Facebook. And that is a place where you can come and share your art and what you've created. We have a folder with all these different mood boards in it for you to be inspired by. And if you, you don't have an idea of what you want to do with your art journal page or canvas or card, or ATC or tag that you are doing that day, you can certainly look at a mood board and get inspired. Also, there is a file, well, the mood boards are in the files. Then there's a photo section where you can look at what other people created inspired by the mood boards. So we invite you to come and join our art group and there will be a link below the video which you can click on that to come and ask to join. Please remember to answer the questions that come up when you ask to join because that's very important where we don't want to get any bots or uh, people who are trying to sell things or people who are spamming the group. So we do uh, pay attention when you answer the questions to make sure that that you're a real live person who wants to join the group and wants to share their art with others. So I'm continuing to make uh, some more roses. I have to tear some more paper because I ran out of torn paper. <laughs> and as you can see, I just have piles of different papers around that I pulled out from my stash. Of course, the problem is now I got to put them back. That's always the tricky part. It's not the getting out. It's the putting away that, that uh, drives me nuts. So that's what I'll have to do next is uh, go put everything away. I'm about done with my roses and I'm going to add a couple buds. You know, roses start, flowers start as buds before they open up. 
there aren't anything any on the mood board but obviously there would be in real life so I'm gonna put some buds on there and as I'm doing this I'm thinking what else do I need well this is all pretty monochromatic and I need a contrasting color and so I'm thinking about that I'm thinking about um, maybe some blue because orange and blue are really good contrasting colors and I use them I've been using them a lot lately and then I was thinking maybe turquoise uh, bluish turquoise-ish greenish colors and I can add some foliage which would obviously be there you know it would be there so I'm gonna do that I didn't pull out any of that paper but surprisingly several of my pieces of painting paper actually had some of those type of colors on them already <laughs> so I was able to not have to go look for anything I do keep painted papers and little pieces of papers in some plastic boxes sorted by color so it wouldn't have been that difficult but I ended up just using the ones that I already had and there is some blue on the um, kind of a turquoisey blue on the little bird houses so I was inspired by the colors of the mood board and by an actual picture on the mood board you might take it more literally you might you know want to do a door um, Doors are an interesting, interesting images in art because you always wonder what's what's behind the door, uh, where does it lead to, you know, is it some kind of a magical door that leads to a magical place, or is it, or is there a family behind that door? Doors are always interesting. Um, you could also do birdhouses, a branch with a birdhouse, or maybe you were inspired by the phone. It doesn't have to be literal; it can be figurative. Maybe you just want to use the colors. Maybe there's an interesting shape that you want to use. But you can definitely find some sort of inspiration anytime you see a mood board. If you just let your mind open up and be, you know, thinking about what's there. It could be the littlest thing. It could be the littlest, tiniest thing. Maybe you just want to make hearts. There's a heart on there. Um, there's a heart shape, couple heart shapes on there because it is February. Uh, one of them is a... Uh, a lava tube in the sandstone that in that particular picture looks as if it's shaped like a heart which I think is a very interesting I believe that is in Arizona actually I think it's it's antelope what's antelope something anyway out there in the desert kind of near the Grand Canyon you can go down in the tubes I went there once and I didn't get to go in it because there was a storm coming and they don't let you go down there if there's going to be any rain because it can flood. So I didn't get to go see them. I'll go again someday. So now I'm adding a little bit of a stem to the bud and then some more leaves. I got just different, different types of greens and blues in the papers and I'm tearing them in leaf shapes and adding them and giving a little bit of contrasting color to make my composition more interesting also flowers have leaves you know <laughs> they just do it's how they collect the sunshine and make more chlorophyll so yeah I don't know what I've already said in this I'm just chattering on um, I'm not to say I'm gluing paper with Liquitex matte gel medium to a wooden board. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> tearing and gluing, gluing and tearing. I think it turned out well. So what I did to finish this piece at the very end is I got out some different water soluble media. Um, I got out the Neocolor 2 crayons and this month in our Joy Sharing we're still talking about water soluble media. Uh, we'll be moving to a different theme next month in March. And I guess this month is almost winding down already. I can't believe it. Really passed fast. And I can't tell you off the top of my head what next month is. I wish I could, but you can come over and join. Just use the link below the video. Um, but anyway, back to what I did to finish this. I um, 
got out some different colors of the crayon and I, I scribbled them onto my under paper, which is deli paper. And then I used a water tank brush to pick up what ended up being the Van Dyke Brown was the only one that I used, I think. And I picked up the pigment and I just went around the outsides of the flowers a little bit, giving them kind of a shadow to make them have a little bit more depth. And then this piece was finished by spraying it with clear acrylic sealer outside, not inside, um, to make sure that it was all, everything is sealed because of course I put that water soluble media on there. So if it got wet, it would not be um, permanent because that stuff would reactivate with any type of fluid. So I give it like three light sprays, holding the spray about 10 inches away and just letting it, you know, mist, gently mist onto there so that nothing runs or smears. And that's how I finish it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I think that's it for me. And I'm just going to put the music on for the rest of the video and um, the not very much left and the close-ups. Thanks. Bye-bye.